DC electronic loads are versatile tools. I've covered a very basic unit in the past, but for some upcoming videos, I needed more capability. So the Element 14 community sent me this one from Multicomp Pro. In this video, we look at how it can simulate a device changing power states, assist in step response analysis, and characterize batteries. With that, welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's go measure. Previously, I covered the basics of an electronic load. In short, an electronic load is like a programmable resistor. In reality, it is a FET in a closed loop system that adjusts the gate to change the drain to source resistance. With this simple setup, you can program a current, voltage, or resistance set point to simulate a device under test or load. The one I'm using from Multicomp Pro is available as a 150 or 300 watt model. It supports those basic modes along with some other advanced capabilities. Heads up, I don't have a good way to test the 300 watt capacity, but we do look at some of the other interesting features of this unit. The display has seven segment digits and some indicators. It has an old school look, but it is very bright and readable. It connects to a circuit via the front panel posts, which are not four millimeter banana jacks. Those posts plus the spade connector cables that it comes with are good for high currents like tens of amps. However, I found it slightly annoying to work with at lower power which caused me to make this little adapter to make changing cables easier. On the back are a USB, LAN, and serial port for remote programming. There are also screw terminals for remote sense and a trigger signal. Again, for general details of how a load works, I have another video on that. So let's focus on some of the more interesting features of this one, starting with the list function. Loads are often used to test DC to DC converters. Here's one I designed for another video. In that video, I manually changed the settings on a different piece of gear. This time, let's do a little bit of automation. Did somebody say automation? No, we don't need your skills this time. This unit has a list function that creates a load profile. You set the current, the time, and the ramp rate for each step. Now, turns out this manual is pretty terrible. For example, this display is actually for the step after it. So if you end up getting this particular unit, here's how you set up the list or sequential operation. Simply go into list mode, then select the list number. Now we enter the maximum current. Next, tell it how many steps are in your sequence. For ours, the first step is at 100 milliamps with a ramp rate of 150 milliamps per microsecond for two seconds. The next step is 500 milliamps with a rate of one amp per second for 250 milliseconds. Now a step at one amp with the same ramp rate, but will sit there for two seconds. And then last, let's go back to the 100 milliamps at a really slow rate for a few seconds. Last again, we have to enter how many times this should repeat with a minimum of two for some reason. Okay, here's the full test setup. The DUT is the DC to DC converter. Its input is a bench power supply and its output is connected to the DC load. The oscilloscope voltage probe is connected to the supply output and I have added a Hall effect current probe. On the scope, yellow is voltage and orange is current. Back on the load, I recall or call the list setup back. With the bench supply already on, I enable the load. On its display, you can see it cycle through the four points twice before it goes back into high impedance mode or turns off. And with just this one shot, we can see how much more high frequency noise there is when the amp is drawing more current like one amp. You can also start to see the step response, but more on that in a minute. At this point, I could go back into the constant current mode and set a specific point for more detailed analysis. For example, you could verify the efficiency of the converter at each of those stages one at a time. Hmm, that would be a good video topic. Anyway, next up, let's look at a related feature called dynamic and how we can use it to evaluate a pulse response. When I say pulse, the end goal is something that looks like this. To get there, we have the same measurement setup as before. On the load, I hit the dynamic button. Now we need to choose a mode. In the incredible manual, it says that the number five sets dynamic pulse mode. Now we enter the first rate of change as 1.5 amps per microsecond, and then the second change rate at a much slower 150 milliamps per microsecond. Then we enter the first current value, so let's pick 50 milliamps, and then the second current at 500 milliamps, last is the pulse time in seconds, which I picked 100 milliseconds. 
No joke, entering this stuff with limited context on a green LED screen makes me think of entering data into the Apollo guidance computer's disky. You are such a nerd. Next, I connect one of my power supply's channels to the trigger input on the back of the load. The graph indicator, for some reason, means that the load is using the external trigger. For that trigger, you could use an Arduino, another test signal, or a piece of test equipment. I'm using the bench power supply because I already have it in frame. Turning on the load does nothing until I turn on the trigger channel. Each time I cycle that channel, the load turns on for 100 milliseconds, switching between the two currents that we set. On the oscilloscope, we can see the overall step response, which looks pretty decent. Sure, it has a little overshoot, but it is stable. With some video editing magic, we can skip to a zoomed in portion of the waveform where you can see when the current drops and how the voltage responds. By the way, back on the front panel of the load, there is a trigger button to manually force the pulse to occur as well. And finally, to compare those two features, sequential mode makes it easy to simulate a complete profile, while the dynamic mode makes it easy to evaluate a single step response. And by the way, the dynamic feature can also switch automatically. The load has a built-in frequency setting to do that switch. And you can use it with all of the modes, voltage, resistance, and power. I just tend to stick with constant current. All right, next, let's talk about batteries. Here is a fully charged yet small lithium polymer battery. Let's see if its stored capacity is actually 105 milliamp hours. The battery discharge feature is as intuitive to use as everything else. First, we enter one for the setup number, and then we set the current range to three amps. Then we need the discharge current for the battery, which I'm setting to 200 milliamps. Next is three volts for the cutoff voltage, then a value for the maximum capacity to test, which I set to 110 milliamp hours for some margin. Last is a timeout in seconds, which I'm setting to 90 minutes. To kick off the measurements, you do call six and then turn on the load. On the display, you have the instantaneous voltage drop and the current draw, along with the test time in seconds and a charge counter. The load stays active until either the voltage time or charge hits the cutoff value that we set. Here we hit the three volt limit. Notice how the unloaded battery then floats back up to 3.5 volts. In total, the battery discharged in about 30 minutes with a capacity of 103 milliamp hours. A next step could be using a different discharge current or putting the battery in a temperature chamber or to repeat the cycle multiple times. All things that an electronic load make super easy. My primary reason for wanting this new Multicomp Pro unit over my older, more basic unit is it has more features and I thought a better user interface. Well, it is easier to enter numbers, but some of the features are a little bit ridiculous to enter through the front panel. But maybe with remote programming, it would be a little bit easier. Visit the Element 14 community to find show notes with product links to this unit. Remember, that is the best place to ask me questions because I get notified and then I can answer them, sometimes with pictures. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to actively modifying a depletion region while Coulomb counting on my electronics workbench.